Welcome back. How's it going? It's Michelle. I wanted to start out this episode by saying how very grateful I am for you. I've gotten some amazing feedback from the show and can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking a hot minute to leave me a review. I would love to share a couple with you. All right. So K-Logic said, I love listening to Michelle. She always has the ability to open my mind to possibilities and get me excited about marketing. It's also great when I'm in a funk because she always lifts my mood with her positivity. Great listen. Claire said, Michelle is the queen of Facebook and Instagram ads and has the latest and greatest strategies that actually work. I love learning from her because she's not only a great teacher, but she is fun. So excited for this podcast and all that is to come. OMG, this means the world to me. Thank you so much. All right, so let's dive into the episode. I have a question for you. Are you tired of posting on social media and hearing crickets? Like you're taking all this time to create an amazing post, like you got the image just right. You got like all your messaging in there with emojis and all, and then nothing. Like no one's liking, commenting, or sharing. It's as if no one saw it, right? Like the incredible invisible (laughs) post. I know I have. Well, the good news is, is that in today's episode, it's all about creating powerful posts and growing a massive, highly engaged audience who knows, loves, and wants to buy from you. Now, before we dive in, I wanted to share that those who are successful and become the influencers are consistent. Like this is nothing new that you're hearing, right? Because we all know consistency is key. However, these influencers are 100% committed to their vision and they will show up every single day in their business to make things happen. They don't just try for a month or two and give up because it's not working. Those are what I like to call entrepreneurs. They are actually able to call themselves entrepreneurs because they are in it for the long haul, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I'm encouraging you to make a commitment to yourself right now to show up consistently, show up powerfully, and show up with purpose. All right, so let's get into it. Which one are you? This was something when I started all my social media learning and knowledge that my mentor, Kate Mache, asked me, which one am I? Or which one are you? Are you a goldmine? You're posting, people are engaging, you're getting high quality leads, and you're actually making money with your customers through your social media posts. Or are you engaging? Like you're having good posts, interaction, and engagement, but it's not making your money. Like your lead flow and your bank account are not increasing month after month. Or Are you wasting your time? Is social media just a time suck for you? Are you posting consistently, doing what you're supposed to do, but it's just crickets. It's as if no one is seeing your stuff. Like all your posts are invisible. So which one are you? Take a hot minute to think about it and be honest with yourself. Are you goldmine, engaging, or a time suck? Now, to be honest, I have gone through all three of these stages. And here's the thing. When I'm not consistent, I fall pretty quickly from goldmine down to time suck. And it takes me so much longer to get back up and like claw my way back up to the gold mine status. So the goal is gold mine, like Avi, right? <laughs> and even if you're currently gold mine, there's that next level gold mine, right? So you might even be saying to yourself, oh my gosh, I find it just so overwhelming to stay consistent. Now, I know that I say, I continue to say that to myself, right? And you might be feeling that way because you might be feeling like I need to be in all these places because as you're watching these influencers and these peoples with millions of followers, right? Or even tens of thousands of followers, you might be saying, oh, well, they're everywhere. I want you to remove that overwhelm for yourself for a hot minute and just post where your audience is at, where your people are at. Like, for example, one of my clients, she um, deals with women of menopause. So they're of a certain age. So she's like, oh, I need to be on Instagram. I'm like, do you though? Are your people there? Are most menopausal or postmenopausal women, are they really on Instagram? The majority of them are probably not. So take that overwhelm off of your shoulders, right? Start with one. And then once you get that down, then you look to repurpose. Because remember, each platform, although it's all social, 
they're all treated a little differently. So you might have to, even if you're repurposing, take a little bit to tweak it for that specific platform. So don't feel like you have to be everywhere, right? Just take a time, get good at that, at that one place, and then slowly move to someplace else, right? Okay, so no matter what platform that you're using, this posting formula that we're going to talk about today can be used everywhere. Now, before we dive into the six simple posts that will get engagement, I wanted to share a quick story with you. If you've ever struggled to get more leads and sales from social media and you're wondering like, why am I hearing crickets and not humans? And you might even be saying to yourself, like having this whole conversation, or I should say you're mean girl and you having this conversation, like, what am I doing wrong? Why am I not getting more prospects for my posts? Why is no one liking, sharing, or commenting? This is never going to work for me. You know, I'm ready to throw in the towel. I totally know how you feel because my social media posting journey (laughs) has been like on two sides of the spectrum. When I first started in the online space, I was all about spamming. Like I, all I did was post on my personal profile because that's what I was told to do, um, about my products or my service and, um, that I was offering. Right. So if you don't know what spamming means, it's that you're only posting about your business or your product, like every day, multiple times per day. Like, and there's no shame if you're doing that right now or you've done it because we've all been there. And the good news is that you're going to learn how to like clean that up today. Right. So then I went to the other side of the spectrum. So I went from spamming, overposting, everyone avoiding me because they thought I was going to be selling them something. And when I say avoiding me, that even means in person. Because if your social media voice is only about that, well, what do you think your people think that you're going to talk about in real life, right? So then I went to the other extreme of posting where People had no clue why I was doing all this, why I was posting, why I was making these videos. They loved the value that I was giving them, but they just couldn't figure out why I was doing it. Like they would see my mom or my husband at work and they would say, oh, I love Michelle. I always see her online and oh, her videos are this, but you know, what's the point, right? And it was so bad that the thing that I was selling, people were, my own family (laughs) was buying from other people. So the reason I was doing this is because I was so afraid of bugging my family and friends about my product. I, and I still wanted to be invited to parties and have friends and I didn't want to scare people away. And what happened was, is that, (laughs) that strategy backfired because no one had a clue what I was doing or why. And it just prevented me from moving forward. Right? So if you're at either one of these spectrums or You might even be, uh, because this has happened to some of my clients and some of my friends, to be honest, is that they're at, it kind of like, I don't even want to say, are they on the spectrum? Because they end up not posting at all because they just don't know what to say. They don't know what to post about. They're kind of like, I don't want to be like this girl. And then I've tried this and no one knows what the heck I'm doing. So they just end up staying still. They're not making progress in their business and their crazy cool dreams are not coming true. So I'm not going to let that happen to you. You're in good hands because I figured it all out after all that struggle and embarrassment, quite frankly, so you don't have to. Now, the other thing I want you to always have in mind is to think like a data collector and become an incredible value provider. It's all about being like a detective. And I had this like epiphany today. So I totally love any detective show, my current favorite or for the past couple of years has been Homicide Hunter with Detective Joe Kenda. Like, hello, he's the man. I don't know what I'm going to do because his like the, the series is going to be ending soon. But any Law & Order, any good detective show, right? And I figured out why I'm so good. <laughs> if I had to pat myself on the back of why I guess I'm so good or I have this passion for what I'm doing right now. Because in the de- being a detective, you're trying to find out who did it, right? You're trying to find out the motive why they did something. So we need to find out as entrepreneurs, as product sellers, as coaches, whatever we're doing, we need to look at 
why they would want to work with us, buy from us, right? We need to find out what their pains are, what's going to motivate them to buy, what are their pains, what are their struggles, what are their dreams, and what are their desires. And when you get really good at this, then you're going to be turning your followers into raving fans because you're going to be gathering all this data and provide them with exactly what they're looking for. And the goal is you want them to be saying, Hmm, how is she in my head? How is she always like right on point with what I'm saying? Like she knows exactly what I'm feeling and she's got the solution for what I'm selling. She gets me. I have to work with her. All right. So now you got your foundation. Now you got your detective hat on. And as I go through these posts, I want you to be thinking in your mind. And even if you have to jot things down, either with pen to paper or an app on your phone, I want you to be thinking as I go through each of these six posts of how you can apply this to what you do and make it fun for yourself and being able to, to, to find the, mo the motive, right? <laughs> to find the motivation for your customers. Okay, so post number one is motivation and inspiration. Like we can all use motivation and inspiration and you'll most likely find that those posts are always double tapped, they're always liked, right? You may not get a comment, but you will always get some sort of engagement. Now you can create a few types of motivational posts and create them um, with your own branding in a platform such as Canva. Like I love, I love Canva for everything. There is a paid option. There is also a free option. The paid option gives you some more um, like photos and stuff that you can use, just a lot more things. You can also keep your branding colors and your fonts and all that kind of like on file. So you don't always have to be changing that out. Now these quotes can be not only something that you find online, but these can be quotes that you say from your live video, from a podcast, even if it's a podcast interview that you've done. Think about things that you think about or say and just put those together because everyone loves them. What's motivating you, right? The other two ideas are inspiring videos and articles. Now, I always say that these are best if done by you. So if it's your live video, if it's your blog, However, you can use other sources that you feel will help your audience. So if you want to, let's say, share a blog from Success Magazine or a, a specific podcast or a podcast episode that you want to share, my always suggestion is that you share something that's complementary to what you have or what you have to offer because you don't want to be sending somebody right over to your competitor, right? Okay, so post number two are engaging posts. And by engaging, I'm talking about actually getting people to take action and usually by liking, commenting, or sharing. And the ones that will get you the most reach is sharing or commenting. So in order to get prospects or leads is to get people to comment in, which is actually people raising their hands which opens the door to start the conversation, to, right? To start that relationship and make connections. Now, here are a few ways that you can do just that. The first one, and I would say the most popular one, I don't even know if I want to say popular. The first one is questions. Every time your brain hears a question, it automatically wants to answer it, right? It's like, oh, I know this, I know this question, I know this answer, and you write it in. Or, hmm, I think I know it, but I'm gonna answer it and see if I'm right or wrong, right? It's like your brain just, it can't help itself. It's just wanting to answer. So here's an example of just one that I did because we just ended the holidays is right after Christmas, I put up my tree and we had this whole family meeting about whether we wanted to do a real tree next year or a fake tree next year. And I thought, hmm, maybe other people will have that. So I just posted a question. Hey, do you prefer real or fake tree? And let me just tell you that 27 comments came in pretty much immediately. And then the comments just kept coming in and coming in. So you can also be looking at this as collecting data as it pertains to your business. So you can do something like, how many hours of sleep do you get per night? So if you're selling a product that helps people get a better sleep, like get a better night's sleep, this is an excellent question to ask. It also starts the conversation to not only build the relationship, but to see if the person is a right fit for your product. 
Now, another engaging post is fill in the blanks. And you can have so much fun with fill in the blanks, right? These, I mean, all these type of engaging posts, you can just have fun with them. Now, again, you want to mix them up. So it can't just be all fun and it can't just be all business, right? You're thinking that you want to be the data collector. So let's say you have an interior design business. You can post um, something like this. In the year, fill in the blank, I redesigned my kitchen. Now this is a pre-qualifying kind of question or fill in the blank because you're gonna be pre-qualifying your audience by when they, what year they filled in that blank, right? So what year they redesigned their kitchen. So if it was like this year or then within the past couple of years, well maybe they're not like, a perfect fit for you right now. However, if the year they filled in was like 20 years ago, well then it's probably time for an update and then you know they're more pre-qualified. Or you could do something like, my kitchen is fill in the blank color. So if they fill in like a maple kitchen or even worse, green, which I don't even know, are there still green or you know those red cabinets like back in the 70s? Like then you know, okay, this is a perfect prospect for me. All right, so let's go into polls. Polls are fun too. Now, if you don't know, there is a feature that when you go in your description, you can click on polls and it usually on your profile page, it gives you a couple of choices, right? Well, you can do them in your posts. If you do them a post in the group, the groups give you more options than just two, but you can also do polls on your live videos, which is way cool. And everyone wants to give their opinion. Now, this was something that I did, um, I don't know, it was like a year or so ago. You can create your own poll by creating an image, and I just did it in Canva, and um, I created a poll with four images of a logo design for something new that I was working on. And so I just basically put the four images and I labeled them A, B, C, or D, right? And then of course saying, which one do you like better? And then they would comment in, a, B, C, or D. And it is really a great way to get your audience involved in what you're doing. So if you are starting a new challenge or developing a new product or business logo, come up with a few choices and have your audience vote. Not only will they feel like they've contributed and they feel like, oh, I'm watching them on their journey, right? And kind of coming along on the ride with you, you'll be spreading the word of what you're up to without selling. So it's just basically creating the curiosity and gets them to ask questions like, hey, what is this for? You know, why are you creating this logo, right? All right, so here's a pro tip when it, come, um, when it comes to certain questions that you ask. So when you start your questions, start with like, what do you think? This is a great way to find out what people are struggling with without directly asking them. It's a safe way for people to answer without feeling vulnerable on social media. Because you know, a lot of times they're like, well, I don't want to share that on social media. It's like that old thing where you used to say, well, a friend of mine is going through this and you're really talking about yourself, right? Now, another thing is you might see often like, how can I help you? Now, this is great if you have a big following already and they already know what you're about. So if you've already been providing value on um, your product or they know your branding voice, then they will know how to respond. However, if you're new or you haven't been clear in your messaging, then hold off on this one until your brand is very clear. All right. So post number three is appreciation. The key to appreciation is acknowledging the actions people are taking. So if you really want to stand out from your competition, show some appreciation for the actions they are taking. And that includes showing up on your page. Saying thank you every now and again goes so far because not very many people are doing that. And people like to be acknowledged and appreciated so they will continue to come back. And there's all kinds of ways to show appreciation from just a simple post saying, hey, thank you for being here, right? To highlighting a customer to maybe even a giveaway. All right, so post number four is behind the scenes, AKA your lifestyle. Now this is the brand builder and the relationship connector. So sharing your life, what you're interested in, pictures of your travels and adventures, your everyday life, no matter 
how boring you think your everyday life might be. Like some days, uh, some weeks, I don't even leave the house. And I remember at first, especially now that I, I work full time in my own business, right? I don't leave to a nine to five anymore. And my kids are in college. So it's like, what? But I do. There's things that I do every day that people can relate to, right? Um, and the more a more about you, like showing who you are and what makes you different or what makes you the same as someone else, it makes you more relatable. So does anyone else watch The Real Housewives? Because I watch them all except for Potomac. How do you say it? Potom Whatever. I can't even say it. Anyways, I totally relate to those women because maybe I don't have as much money as they do or as many toys as they do, but I can relate to their sense of humor, their fashion sense, being a mom, sending their kids off to college. I also look at what I want my life to look like, right, or be like, or in some cases, what I don't want it to be like, right? So you can do this from a personal side to a business side, depending on the product that you're offering. Like, let's just say you're offering something that offers freedom. Well, people who don't want to work their nine to five is looking for a crazy cool life. So why not show them your lifestyle or why not show them what could be possible as a result of using your product or service? So here are some ideas for inspiration for these lifestyle behind the scenes posts. You can either do a video of you playing with your kids or doing something fun. You can also post a pic of what you're doing in your life, like going to the gym, going to Target, like everyone can relate to a Target run, right? <laughs> doing something fun, like exploring your hometown, your pets, live events, running errands, like everyone can relate to growing grocery shopping, your home office, cooking your favorite meal, date night, hobby, maybe a new website. People want to see a lifestyle. Like that is why reality TV is so popular. Show them your pets, your kids, your life. These behind the scenes posts are really what separates you from your competition because it allows your perfect person to make a connection with you on a different level, on another level. It just goes deeper than the value that you're giving. Because think about this just for a minute. We're all not selling something like brand new that we invented, right? We're selling something similar that other people are selling. Yes, we're all different and we might have a little tweak here or there, but the competition is pretty dang high. So this could be what separates from someone or making that determining factor, whether someone buys from you or somebody else, right? Get people involved in your life and they'll want to follow you along for your adventures, right? All right, so post number five is vulnerability. Like human beings want authenticity, vulnerability, and consistency. It seems pretty simple. However, not very many people get this right. People can see who's not being who they truly are. You feel me? Like I'm sure you've seen that before, right? And the more that you can admit when everything is not perfect, your fans will connect with you more. So share your journey, whatever that journey is, right? Share the story of how you overcame a struggle or a challenge. Share a bad day and how you got out of it. Just don't leave everything like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> she's so depressing. I can't tune in anymore, right? Like, okay, everything is not perfect because we always tend to share like, um, you know, the edited version of our life on social media. No one shares these bad days. And sometimes I, I actually see people like they post these like those ugly cries and I'm like, oh my gosh, this poor girl. And then I'm like, okay, so I'm not telling you to have, if you're having a bad day and you, you need to take a hot minute and like have an ugly cry, do that off camera and just come in and say, okay, and admit I had an ugly cry. Then I changed my thought process and I got this. Or how would you, you know, here's a question. How, you know, what do you suggest I do to overcome this, right? There's nothing wrong in asking, you know, for a little, a little help maybe or sharing what you're doing and just creating more engagement and let them know that you're real and you're not perfect because no one is perfect. All right, post number six is a sneak peek or creating that curiosity post. 
The goal is to get people curious on what you're offering or coming out with. Get them to comment in, hey, tell me more, right? So maybe you found a way to lose weight without starving or how to exercise without taking like hours at a time, right? Or how to speed up the time to train your baby to sleep through the night. Or maybe how you helped a customer reach a milestone. You know, what are the benefits of your product without saying the product? Get creative and think, what would make you want to know more? And the goal is to get people to say, hey, tell me more, right? Think about more benefits rather than the features. So we are done with the six posts. And I want you to think for a hot minute, like, which type of posts do you think that you need to be doing more of? So let's just recap the six posts real quick. The one first one is motivation, inspiration. The second is engagement. Then you have appreciation, behind the scenes or lifestyle, vulnerability, or sneak peek and curiosity. So which one do you think you're either not doing or that you could be doing more of to kind of mix them in? Now, this formula includes all six post types. So it's important to get all six rotated so it's not all just fun and personal or it's not all just questions or or the memes, right? Um, you want to be like, kind of per, like mixing them all in, like we could, we could, I'm an eighties kid. So it's all about mixing on, you know, what we're doing in our posts. So it's not, you know, it's a co- good combination of being that data collector, promoting your business, having some fun without scaring everyone away or just feeling like, Oh, I know if I go to that page, I'm going to be sold to Right. And the goal is all about creating curiosity. And if you follow this formula, you'll get people to comment in and it makes it so much easier to start the conversation, build the relationship, which ultimately will make you that sale and get you that conversion that you are looking for. So cheers to creating more powerful posts this year and make sure that you have your best year yet on social media. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do because there are a lot of great episodes in the can and I have a lot of more good ones planned um, with some really amazing guests. And if you like the show, I would love it if you left me an honest review. I hope you enjoyed the show. Until next time, happy marketing.